Uh, hi guys, my name is <clears throat> Engineer Ephraim De La Serna of Integrated Maritime. Um, I'm a certified instructor of instructor for Kongsberg um, Neptune Systems. So today we're going to talk about the ERS familiarization course. This is just a short review of what really is Kongsberg. On the later phases of the training is that we, we are we will be talking about module by module and um, some discussions regarding with the basic foundations of the simulator so let's begin so Kongsberg simulator before before anything else we let's talk about the Kongsberg profile first so Kongsberg is a major worldwide supplier of ship automations and control systems it's in offshore um, auto chip systems and everywhere almost all ships um probably most ships have Kongsberg systems on on their on their ships it has a detailed knowledge of systems and processes on boards of a thorough understanding of the industry's training needs so um on the philippines it's around as what what we are told and and based on statistic statistics it's 90 now 90 percent of the population of the philippines is Kongsberg equipment around 300 300 installations all over the Philippines. One of the major schools in the Philippines is also using the, the simulator, the full mission, the the full mission, the desktop, and some schools now are going for the walkthrough, and we have a separate lecture for that specific walkthrough. Uh, it also meets the present and future training needs in the maritime and offshore industry, but it Kongsberg is never limited to simulators only. They have a wide array of, of products, so that's a different discussion on what's their products. Uh, Kongsberg simulators are developed on an actual ship specifications and performance data, making the simulator as realistic as possible. So later we will we will tackle about the the realism of the simulator. One of the most realistic thing that I have seen with Kongsberg simulators is the walkthrough, which for me will redefine. The methods of training and eventually give more more view of give a larger view of what's an actual engine on board so it that that was being created i will i'll try to discuss that specific um walkthrough system on the later phases of the episode um provides high quality training in every aspect from details in a single subsystem to an overall role running of a loading and discharging operation, including handling emergency situations, which is very, very critical, especially in handling emergency situation. When we're talking about single subsystem, Kongsberg system has been subdivided into some sub modules. So as you can see here, they have subdivided it into modules. So as you can see, it's subdivided into modules. All the green all the green panels, all the green color numbers is inside, outside in outside the control room, and all the beige color colors is inside the control room, and the light blue is either on the bridge or outside the whole engine room, and you have a virtual view for the engine room, so that's the process. And provides high quality training on, on subsystems and overall. It makes the possibility to customize simulator solutions to their clients specific training needs. For example, if you wanted for like this only, you go for ETO only, they can customize that one. Um engine control room may be represented by a combination of interactive mimic panels, meaning the full mission simulator operational panels for the purifier if you wanted a purifier system. So we will discuss later also for that one. This is just a brief overview of what they really can do with the simulators. So consoles for desktop stations for practice. Um, this can also be a possible integration of the e-learning system. Concepts allows individuals laid out control rooms to meet exact customer needs. Meaning, if like for example in the in Australia they made what they have on board on ships, they can recreate it on an actual vessel simulator so what they have on ship they have it on on shore so mimicking the whole thing so that officers on board like the australian navy or, or any parts they can they can really 
they, they have a very high flexibility in doing things. They can reprogram, remodel the actual ship like condition, even the walkthrough system. So they, they have an instructor system which is designed to enhance the quality of simulation training, providing complete vegetative user-friendly control. So it, this is a Windows-based system. This is called the Neptune. And that's a separate subject for instructors. So instructors can develop customized exercise modules for individual teams or in combination of both. So when we're talking about individual training, like um, we call that one integrated maritime as the ladderized, ladderized system of training for where we can lock the program to make it more efficient. Um, that's a that's an instructor's course. But um, one of the key things about uh, locking locking modules in the system is that what we teach is limited to purifiers only. For example, in Oxmax one, we wanted to limit that the students because when you have too much modules, when you have too much modules to look at. Students will go astray on, on that specific topic that you wanted, what, what outcome that you wanted. So we reconfigure the system, locking all this one. For example, if you wanted only a training on diesel generator, we can lock the program with the diesel generator only so that your your the candidates, um, can, especially with the trainees, the trainees can only go for diesel generator. So meaning you as a trainee, you will be immersed only on the diesel generator. And if you wanted to go, uh, the ladderized system opens up, for example, if the emergency generator, we try to open it little by little until they can have the whole process display directory visible. Next is um, automatical recording of all activities during the exercise. They have a replay function for debriefing and briefing, uh, debriefing and a built-in assessment system where integrated maritime comes in to, to adjust that one. Integrated Maritime has now is now currently building the five level assessment system for hiring, retention, and promotion. So we will we will be um, offering that one to shipping companies. So it's quite extensive programming, but it's doable. Um, as we will always remember that um, training uh, assessment is always there is no such thing as an objective assessment. Uh, you can lessen the objectivity by programming, creating rubrics assessment. Eventually, it's 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 quite. Uh, the Kongsberg system can really work with Boolean logic, so, uh, it's quite e it's quite easier for the instructor to check the cross referencing with the rubric system. Um, the competence building Kongsberg is designed to train students and employees. We learn on a vast array of skills and train. The topological values and high fidelity realism of an engine room simulator system offer system meaning uh they can they have a they have a lot of competency building programs and, and we have designed it in we call that textologic and stcw we try to map everything in stcw creating uh what you, we we call that one column five uh because there are four columns in SDCW, we created a column five so that we can release what specific competencies based on the Kongsberg, based on the Kongsberg competencies that can that can be delivered using a Kongsberg simulator. I mean, so the basic operational training for junior officers is that we have preparing for getting underway, maneuvering to open seas, the steady steam, steady steaming, approaching harbor, finishing with engine operations for auxiliary boilers and cargo turbines. They, Kongsberg has this one, and we have already pilot testing the 24-hour scenario with an eight-hour program that it loops around. So we have incorporated the basic operational training for junior officers in University of Cebu, uh, which UC is currently working with this um, automated academic assessment system for lessening the objectivity and increasing the OBE program for the university. So I hope all schools will be implementing also that one. Um, we have advanced operational training for senior officers. It's for failures of emergency. Uh, we're now incorporating this one to the management levels and also with the OICs because some of the topics inside the, inside the uh, academic, academic system is for it's already embedded in the in the training. We have team training 
fault diagnostics and tracking, crisis management, restoring to normal operations. That those are blackouts, steering gear failures, and everything. So optimized studies for senior officers, they can also do that one, fouling and wear, combustion performance, control loop optimization, balance recovery, valuable pitch, variable pitch, external condition. When I was on board, I was using Kongsberg to, to look into this combustion performance, the PV diagrams where I use it to map. If there is a problem on board, I try to simulate it, what's wrong with the system. So it's very effective, especially with 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 senior officers on studying the performance curve and trying to balance power um as we all know shipping companies lesser fuel lesser good combustion equals lesser fuel so better the saving next is um the certification of dnv has been from detnos veritas according to the standards of certification for the maritime simulators 2.14 which covers class a class b and class c which is they are fully compliant and they are they will be renewing i think 2017 or 2018 i have really no idea yet but they are now trying to recertify it so who are certified by dnb 2.14 a training provider shall be certified by the 2.14 um a training provider which uses a simulator for examination uh a use which uses a simulator for mandatory simulator training which uses a simulator for demonstration of continued proficiency so that's one part so everything here is 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 the exact word in sdcw which is the process of buying installation or new simulator which is to be used for examination mandatory simulator training training and this is what Kongsberg is a manufacturer offering a simulator for examination man so meaning they are a manufacturer so they are certified by dnb 2.14 so what are the classes of simulator a class a is full mission simulator dnb has a checklist for that one on how to class a class a simulator a class B is a multitask, specific checklist has already been carried out. Class C with a limited task and a class S for special task. So if we look at uh I will try to discuss what's classes of simulator based on the DNB 2.14, but that's a diff different topic. So what I need now is to familiarize the students on the prop. I mean how to how to operate the simulator. So now let's go to the hard to, to your hardware knowledge. So the simulate the mostly desktop desktop simulators are being used with two operating stations. Kongsberg can configure it into four. It's just a basic PC with with uh, it's just a basic PC with two four monitors, four three and our 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 system we can configure in integrated maritime. We we use we use we use we use a we use a, a system with a four configuration four configuration and we're planning to have the walkthrough system here so for assessment which is a better way now the keyboard functions is um you have an f1 an f2 f3 all the functionalities here or the all the functionalities here are, are running the simulation freezing the simulation exit f4 but now this these functions are being over over especially if you're a trade instructors are now using this one because during the conduct of examination or exercises or assessment uh neptune can stop the student from running freezing and ex exiting the simulator they can all go only use the f9 f10 f11 f12 um they cannot go to f5 and f6 f7 uh, they can go to f7 and f8 so there are certain limitations using the simulator which is very key to full control in that, that's called full control in, in in the instructor station so students do not have a reason to freeze the simulator once you run the exercises and it will it will mean it will maximize the the interaction of the instructor and the instructor and the, the student okay so Next, the mouse functions. The mouse functions is the left click and just a right click. Just a basic mouse. So, but with the left click, you can start pump, start compressors, open bulbs, acknowledge alarms, checking of status, starting and indications. But on the right click, right click, you stop. It's just one, zero, stop, close, stop, close. But when, once you hover on that specific system, you acknowledge. So, let's check how does the mouse function really works. So, as you can see here, um, 
if i click this close ball if i click on that one if we say click it's left click if we left click that one it opens and if you right click it it closes so that's the function you can start a pump or you can stop a pump okay so it's just very basic you can click auto or you can click that one okay so if you want it to go to a number just click that one and switch switch it but you have to be very careful in logging in numbers so you have to example if i put 50 on it then i put if if i do not press enter it will not register for example let's do that one and i switch here so it goes back to 100 what you need to do is just click 50 then press enter so that the current the, the value that you are inputting will be placed inside okay now um the system manual there is a there's there are electronic manuals on the which is very very good the electronic manuals on the system is they have three manuals they have a hard copy they have the instructor system they have a neptune instructor system for instructors so which is being used and this is partly instructor and student familiarization so you have three manuals you can use that one how to run the simulator what you need just to do is just experiment the simulator next is the system manual has this one that's a this is the old version this is a two point this is still a 2.2 version of the simulator but what i have now is a 2.7 so the two point this is a 2.8 so up Kongsberg has been recently upgraded to 2.9 with a walkthrough system which is already been deployed in the philippines for i think five to six, seven seven and there are more coming with the walkthrough system so as you can see there is a question mark here if you click that specific question mark it goes to that specific module see if i switch that one on if i go back to the process directory move to the freshwater system click that one it goes to the documentation so Kongsberg is heavily documented as documented has already been documenting this system um, with instructions so as you can see preheating operating procedures are already embedded in the simulator for easier access so but we we recommend um uh we're, we're recommending it to we're recommending it to purchase the book for the Kongsberg because um so the students the book of the Kong uh, we, we we the Kongsberg book we published uh, especially with students it will hit around 11 to 10 courses in, in the collegiate level so very very important that goes on to the practical assessments for management and officers so we're still working with the book with Kongsberg if it, that will be published um next is we have so as you can see that's the question mark here next so this is the description of legends later i will on the next episode i will talk about the description of legends this is just a brief overview of how powerful this, this simulator can really do um on my side uh, working with the simulator is uh one of the top of the line simulators that i have seen so far so the description of legends we will talk about that one so we have already talked about the mouse so every ship has a different color so let's switch here so the description of legends if you go to the process directory is in the panel directory you click description of legends what we usually do is we give the students to stay it on one screen and the other screen is try to navigate look for the colors so on other on different ships they have different colors different classification societies different flag it depends on ship it varies from ship to ship so we can no color is standard so Kongsberg has created their own standards for colors so this is their colors they have static symbols here now they have an output value the value tag and one thing is candidate should be very familiar with the uh, prefix characters and also with especially instructors because they there is this is where the malfunctions will take place and 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 how to navigate the system the digital output so if there is something wrong with the alarm this colored green for example um go back to the seawater system as you can see if p stands for pressure and there will be an alarm there this becomes red 
Okay. So you have a malfunction page later. We'll talk about how to reset the malfunction. Picture number, ready, start. Symbols, they have very basic symbols. So um, international, international is speaking different symbols, different companies, but they have standardized their own. So it's, they have only two pumps, two types of pumps, centrifugal pump, displacement pump. So very, very uh, basic pumps. But uh, we try to deepen that one. We try to deepen that one using using gear pumps, uh, which is very, very good. So on off conditions, controller window. So so the controller window is just uh, is where you put a set point and a manual output and a controller window here also, which is used for set points. Okay. Next is the one thing one thing we're working with 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 the uh, checklist is that mostly there should be a familiarization checklist. Yeah, you as a candidate should have a familiarization checklist. So there are two types of checklist: the full mission simulator and desktop simulator. One thing is coming up is the walkthrough familiarization checklist, which is currently a map of the whole engine room, so you can be familiar. The walkthrough system is using an Xbox system, so you have to navigate the whole engine room. I think it's around five to six deckers of floor. One, two, three. Yeah, around four, four or five deckers of floor. So you have to be be familiarized with the you have to be familiar with the locations. Next is the variable page. The variable page is now I will just discuss this one on how to how to check on the variable page. So on the variable page, this is what the location looks like on the variable page. So okay, before we go to the variable page, let's look at how this simulator really works. First is this one is the running command. If you I remember when I press F2, it freezes. See? It freezes the simulator. If I press F1, it starts the simulator. Now this picture number MD01 stands out. In the process directory, that's if you move from fuel oil to trans fuel oil transfer system, it moves directly to the picture number. So if your instructor says goes to module number forty one, you go to that forty one, and automatically it goes to airport. So this is just a module name, and this is the module, and this is the module number. This is the module name. So here you have alarms. On the alarms, if you click that specific button there, it goes to the alarm summary log, so you can see what's everything inside this alarm summary and if this is blinking you can click that one or this one and you can to acknowledge an alarm you just have to click that specific number and you have already clicked you have already acknowledged that specific alarm okay um kongsberg also has a system called this is for the e-learning system i think they have a very good plan for this one even i i, I we have to configure this one in university the university so that students can do a standalone um, view of uh, the simulator. So we can work with that one later. So they have also a unit conversion. For example, if you're in the US, if you're in the US, you wanted to bunker, if we have a scenario for gallons, they can convert 